Oh God, oh God, I feel his Hallelujah. presence in here on this morning. Yeah. Anybody else got him more than anything? Hallelujah. Praise him. Anybody here yeah. just excited? Because if it had not yeah. been for God, we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. I want to preach to somebody yeah. who yeah. thought you wasn't going to make it. Yeah. I want to preach to somebody who was in jail yeah. and you didn't know yeah. how he was going to get out. Yeah. I want to preach to somebody who was on the table yeah. and the doctor didn't know what to do. Yeah. And now because he delivered you, yeah. you love him more than anything. Yeah. More than God, I thought we wanted to praise him this morning. I don't know about you, but I got to praise him, my spirit. That'll make me want to give him glory. Because if it had not been for him. More than anything. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, there's an anointing in this room today. I encourage all of you at home to get ready for the word. I encourage you at home to get ready for worship. I encourage you at home to get ready to give God praise. Anything. Thank you. Lord. Look what somebody said more, more than anything. Than anything. For those who have Hallelujah. your Bibles, we'll be coming yeah. very quickly out of the 14th chapter of the book of Acts. The 14th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at the 19th verse. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to kindly rest on your feet as we read these pastor scriptures. We're only going to read two scriptures. Amen. Sometimes two is enough. Yes. Amen. Y'all yes. don't know it, but when it's two, it's agreement. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Hey. I need to be in agreement. I need to be in agreement with somebody. With somebody. I can't get no help here. Yeah, I want to talk to the ones that feel like you're all alone. I want to talk to the ones that feel like you're by yourself. I want to talk to the ones that's in the crowd, but yet you're still like you're by yourself. I said we're gonna be in agreement today. Yes. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, the 14th chapter of Acts, beginning at the 19th verse. Everybody is able to stand. Look at what he says. He says, And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, mm -hmm. drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. Ah, yeah. uh, God, thank you. And came you. into the city the next day, yeah. and he departed with Barnabas and Darby. Yes, God. I want to use for a topic the Lord spoke this in my spirit and I want to encourage somebody two words, two words, two words two verses, two words look at somebody and say I'm back I'm back hmm. yeah. hey, hey, thank you Lord and that'll make you just want to shout right hey, there look at somebody one more time and tell them I'm back I'm back hallelujah God of the Lord. I just want to, just for a few minutes, amen, I want to uh, give a shout out to all of our responders and our first responders and our hospital uh, attendees and workers and doctors and, 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 and the policemen and those people that are continually going forward to keep us safe. I do want to also encourage you, please continue to wear your mask. I don't care what they said, wear your mask, amen. Uh, clean your hands, amen. Uh, be careful of what you go. If you can help it, stay away from the large crowds. If you can, amen. Look at somebody and say amen. Amen. As we began to embark on this passage of scripture, we will find that the context of the text within itself simply talks about life. It talks about it how when you're on a high note. You got a whole bunch of friends. Mm. Come on, mm -hmm. you it talks about the context of the of the scripture says that when you're doing what everybody wants you to do, yeah. everybody's in your corner. Oh, yes. I can't get no help here. Yeah. Uh, as long as everything is going well, as long as everybody is hooraying you, and as long as everybody is hurrah hurrah for you, amen. Uh, everybody's concerned and happy about where you are because that's where they want you to be. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't gonna talk uh -huh. to me. Uh, it's, it's easy to have friends. Come yeah. on, now. Yes, it is. Come but on. the context of the scripture talks about life in that that when you begin to do what God called you to do, yeah, yeah. you're going to find that some of the very people that said they were with you end up being against you. My God. Yeah. You're going to find the very one that said I love you yeah. you find out that they really hate you. Come on, man. You're going to find out the ones that say I got your back are the very ones that are stabbing you in your back. You will find that when you begin to follow God and you begin to get your life in order, you will find that the very people that are supposed to have godly order, come on, godly principles, come on, godly morals, come on, godly values, come on, you will find that they are the very ones that become the most immoral people. 
deeper that you ever want to see. And after life struggles and after you've gone through a whole lot of stuff and after you've been down for a long time, we come here today to declare to the devil and the whole world, I'm back. I'm back. I'm about to, I'm about to shout myself up in here. You got to say to yourself that regardless of what you've been through, yeah, yeah. there is the possibility that you can be restored. Yes. 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 Somebody say, Thank I'm, back. Lord. I'm, I'm back. back. Now, the text of the scripture here, the context of the scripture, in verse 19, we will find that the first thing the text talks about, it begins to describe, come on, the people in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you why this is so imperative because, you know, the Bible says that Antioch was the place where they were first called Christians. Right. Uh -huh. I want you all to get uh -huh. this. Uh, Iconia was, if you would, the harbor of religion. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so now you've got where people first became Christians and where they developed their education to understand the theory and the, the philosophy of Christianity. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so it would seem to me that these particular people would not have a problem with receiving the word of Jesus Christ. I'm going somewhere. See, what happens is when you are down, people like it. Yes. Come on. Y'all don't have to talk to me. I'm going to talk to myself. When, when, when I was barely making it, when I was when I was twisting between, when I didn't know what to do, when I was cussing and fussing mm -hmm. and acting stupid and beating people up and getting locked up. I'm talking about me, not y'all. And, and getting locked up and, 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 and shooting people and getting shot and stabbing people and getting stabbed. Y'all didn't talk to me. When I was in everything but a coffin, I had a whole bunch of friends I thought was on my side because I was where they were and in some cases I was beneath them. Come on. Y'all don't want to hear this. Because people are quick to adore you as long as you are beneath them. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to talk to me. As long as you don't say nothing, you're good. As long as you don't disagree, you're good. As long as you don't have your personal opinion, you're good. As long as you go along with the crap that's going on, you're good. As long as you keep taking it along, we dish it out, you're good. But how dare you have the audacity to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. How dare you have the audacity to say, I'm not going to take this no more. How dare you have the audacity to say, after all that they have done and all that has happened in your life, how dare you stand up and say, I'm back. Come on, Jesus. Here it is, here it is. In order for us to, to clearly understand the topic of the message, we must understand that we must explore what we are back from. Jesus, come on, come on. See, some of us are here, but we're not back. Come on, right. come on Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Let me say it again. Some of us are in the room, but we still in last week. Come on, come on. Right. Woo, God help me here. Some of us are still in 2022, but we still in 1974. Y'all ain't talk to me. Some of us have not gotten over the trauma and the and, and, and the, the, the anguish that we have experienced in the last 10, 20, 30 years, or perhaps the last two years, and because of it, we cannot make a comeback because we ain't back yet. Come on, Jesus. So I want to start off by going back to where you were, which stop you from going forward to where God is trying to take you. See, you cannot help what has happened in your life. You cannot help the things that are put in front of you. You cannot help the struggles you had to deal with. You cannot help the people that have come against you. Why? Because you know the Bible says that there is evil in this world. Uh-huh. Don't take my word for it. Just look at what's going on over in Russia. That's just straight out evil. I ain't got to go that far. Look at what's going on in Baltimore. That's straight evil. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Y'all getting upset at me. Look, you got to understand. Look at your city. It's evil what's going on there. You got people killing people. People shooting people for no reason. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh-huh. I just saw in the news last night there was an old man that was walking down the street. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And some young kids, just because they could, they made fun of him. And when he tried to resist and walk away, they shot him and killed him. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. See, that's evil in the world. But I declare today that we're not gonna take it sitting down. We're not gonna take any more junk. We're not gonna let the devil continue to ride that line. Look at somebody say, I'm back. Some of us, some of us, we have, we have a very difficult time coming back because we haven't gotten over. I gotta say this again. Some of us, we have a difficult time coming back because we have not gotten over. I'm not the only one in here that's ever been to jail. I'm not the only one that's ever been falsely accused. I'm not the only one that's been rightfully accused but went to jail anyway. Right. Come on. 
But what I'm telling you is that at some point in your life, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you're going to have to get over mm. yes. what happened yes. to you. Yes, God, yes. I'm speaking to somebody right now who, who, who when they were young were fungled with by Uncle Tommy, you know, were, 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 were misused or mishandled by Auntie, Auntie Swim or, or, or somebody that, that, that was harassed in school or somebody that was bullied in school when you were young. And because you carry that in your life, I'm looking at somebody who may have been abused by their own father, amen, and your mother looking at you crazy when you tell her that daddy messing with me. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And, 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 and what happens is that if you don't get over that, yes. You can never say I'm back. That's right. I want to talk to somebody who, for what some reason, unbeknownst to you, your parents didn't want you, so they said. I want to talk to somebody that, that the family just kicked you out and said, you ain't no good. I want to talk to somebody that mama couldn't raise you, but grandma had to raise you. And I want to talk to you, and I want to let you know, if you can't get over, you can't come back. Amen. So the first point is, the first point is, write this down, is you must get over what happened yeah. to you. Yeah. All right? Uh-huh. Now, the first point is, in order to make a comeback, you got to get over what happened to you. The second point is, is that you cannot be upset because of the hand you were dealt. Right. Amen. Y'all yes. ain't going to like this right yes. here? You can't be upset because of the hand you were dealt. Now, you know, uh, 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 there's some things that happened in my life that I don't think was fair. There's some things that happened in my life I think shouldn't have happened to me. There's some things that happened in my life I don't understand why I had to be the one to go through it. There's some things that happened in my life I don't understand why my family had to endure such a thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Y'all looking at me crazy. You know, uh, there's some times I wonder, how come I couldn't be six feet? I mean, I'm only 5'11", forgive me, Father. But, I mean, why couldn't I be six feet? Yeah. I can't deal with what happened to me? I can't. I have struggled. I had to struggle with stuff that happened in my life. Why I had to be the one that had to be the bad boy? Why I had to be the one they always accused of doing stuff? Why I had to be the one that everybody you know looked at, looked down on? Why I had to be that person? Why I had to be the one that everybody thought? I'm talking to some of y'all that nobody thought would be nothing. Why I had to be the one that everybody thought you would never get nowhere? Why I had to be the one? See, so you got to be able, amen, to deal with the hand that was dealt to you. Old folks used to say, when they give you lemon, make lemonade. The deep old folks used to say, when they give you scraps, make hog moths and chitlins. Amen, amen, come on. I ain't playing with y'all. I ain't playing with y'all. Those was the scraps. Those was the scraps. Those was the stuff that they didn't deem was worth anything. Those were the things that they said, we're giving to them because it ain't no good to us. Oh, God, I'm going to go somewhere. How about whenever somebody says that then you no good to them, God says, I can use you. Yes, God. That's who I want to talk to. I want to talk to the folks who life said you ain't good enough. You ain't tall enough. You ain't pretty enough. You ain't smart enough. Your hair ain't long enough. You got too much hair. Uh, you're too thick in certain places. You're too skinny in other places. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You think too quick. You think too slow. You on a yellow bus. You on a short yellow bus. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I want to talk to people who have been rejected by society because they cannot appreciate the value that God had in you. God, look at somebody and say, I'm back. I'm back. Now we're here in the text. We notice here, the first point was that you got to make sure, you understand the people that were there. They were people who were supposed to be church people. I got to say this. Y'all ain't going to like this. I hope you don't turn me off right here. But sometimes church people can be the most cruelest people in the church. Sometimes church people can be the most cruelest people in the community. Sometimes church people can be the meanest people on the job. I don't understand how you can come to church and praise God and shout in church on Sunday. And then go to your job on Monday and, and raise hell all day. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But you got to understand that, 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 that that's the thing. I, I need my script up here. So you got to understand that there's two points you got to make sure we understand. And the first point is you got to remember that everything that's going on in your life. You got to remember the, the notes that are going on, uh, the things that are happening. You got to remember what God is saying to you. And you got to remember, like my, my second point, you can't help the hand you was dealt. You can't help who, who who's your family. You can't help who your mama was. You can't help who your daddy was. You can't help who your sister was. You can't help who your uncle was. You can't help who your cousins was. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Now you can help who your spouse is. I'm gonna leave that one alone right there. Uh -huh. But you gotta understand, the first thing is you must be able to get over what happened to you. Amen. Second point, you cannot be upset about what happened to you. And the third point is, be able to handle what happened to you. Now, let's get to the text here. So the text says, first of all, that we're dealing with Christian people who are supposed to have a Christian concept and supposed to have studied how the church works. But what happened was that Paul, when he began to share them revelation. 
Now, I want you to get this. It's a difference between uh, uh, insight and revelation. Uh -huh. Amen. Insight is when I have some information given to me, unbeknownst to you, to help me give a definition. Uh -huh. Amen. That's insight. Revelation is when God reveals something to you that he has not revealed to no one else or he reveals something to you that is about to occur that everyone else can't see. I got to say this. I got to say this. I'm excited because God often reveals things to his people so they understand that he is still God. Amen. Right. Look somebody say, I'm glad, I'm glad that he, he talking about God, uh -huh. is still God. Amen. Now, I want y'all to get this because, see, what happens is, is when God reveals something to you, watch this now, you are to expect adversity. That's right. Y'all ain't going to like this part right here. Because most of us, we like to be in church. We like everything to be well. We don't want nobody to say nothing. But we want to make sure that, 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 that when God, uh, when we say something, we want to make sure that everybody accepts what we say. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can I help y'all? God is not going to reveal something that's going to make everybody happy. Come on, say it. Say it. No, I can prove it. No, I can prove it. Because truth yeah. mm, Come on. make people angry. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Y'all don't want to hear me. Uh, truth yeah. makes people upset. Y'all ain't going to want to hear me. Truth or make folk leave their mama. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Truth or make a man leave out the house and look for Sally. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Truth or make a woman say, I'm going to find me somebody on the side. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh -huh. Truth or make somebody say, I ain't going back to that church because I don't like what they're saying. Truth or make folk believe that somebody won an election when in fact they didn't win it. Truth or make somebody get upset because they didn't get what they want. And so they decide they're going to make a separate call. Y'all didn't catch on that, did you? Look at your name and say, Truth. Truth. But I dare you slap with somebody and say, I'm back. I'm oh. back. Look at what he says here. He says here. So, so, so when Paul began to speak revelation to the Christians, mm -hmm. y'all hear me? Uh -huh. He began to speak revelations, Acts 14 and 19. He began to speak revelation to the Christians. Uh -huh. Now, I have learned in my few years of life that it's one thing to be a Christian in title. And be a Christian in lifestyle. Yes, yes, God. Come on, Come on now, Pastor Come Jesus. On. I know, I know a whole lot of Christians yeah. mm -hmm. that believe, for whatever reason it is, that what their religious convictions are is straight God. Mm -hmm. Come on. But when you line them up to the morals of the Bible, mm -hmm. it don't match. Come on, Come on. Come on Holy Ghost. I gotta say this right here, and I know this is not uh, pertaining to I'm back, but I need to say this because you need to hear this. And that is, I am against abortion. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Y'all don't have to like me. I got to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm against abortion. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I think it's up to the woman to choose whether or not she has it or not. Amen. Y'all don't have to like me. I don't care. Amen. It is not my job, and it should not be anybody's job to tell a woman what's going on with her body and what she Amen. has to do with her body Amen. in order for her to live in her body. Amen. 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 And there's some unique cases where it absolutely could be necessary. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. But that's between her, her God, yes, and her physician, right. and sometimes the baby's father. Amen. Right. Yes, Amen. Most of the time it's because of the baby's father. They don't want to have it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Let yeah, me leave it there. So look at what he says here. Let me get back to my word because I'll go right. off in another way and somebody get mad and turn me off. And now that I got your own, look at somebody and say, I'm back. He says here, the first thing he says, he says that you got you got to uh, understand that, that you got to get over, point number one, you got to get over what you've been through. The reason why a lot of us can't come back is because we're still struggling yes. with what we've been through. Yes. The reason why a lot of us can't come back is because we're still worried yes. about the side effects of something that happened 10 years ago. Okay. I got to be honest. There's a decision that I made 10 years ago that I'm living with today. Oh, Y'all don't have to say amen. amen. There's stuff that I decided I was going to do 20 years ago that I'm living with today. Amen. Come on. There's some hell I stirred up 20 years ago mm -hmm. and every now and again I see it poke his head and say, hey, I'm still here. Come on, <laughs> Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's the truth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at what he says here. So the first thing was, he began to speak revelation. Uh -huh. So Paul began to speak revelation, and he began to persuade people uh, uh, about the truth of Jesus Christ. And what the reality is, is that I spoke before, truth will make folk angry. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. I got to yeah. say this. Yeah. I give yeah. all the love and, I, and shout out to my wife because my wife tells me the truth. Mm. Whether I like it or not. My wife and I, we have discussions and, and we sometimes have uh, philosophical differences because she was raised when, as she became an adult, she was in a high society and she dealt with things at a different level. When, when I was an adult, I was in the street acting a fool. Amen. So sometimes our uh, 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 philosophical views about issues of life are very different. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna mess with me. But I, I appreciate my wife because my wife stays inside of her view of her philosophical moral character. Amen. And even if I say something that sounds a little crazy, she'd be like, babe, I don't know about that. Okay, uh, okay. Maybe you ain't never had your wife look at you and say, <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, okay, okay, I, I'm probably the only one. Uh, uh, but, but, but I appreciate the fact that, 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 that she stays in her character and she makes sure that I stay on the guard. She's my little guardrail to keep me on the road. Y'all look at that be crazy. Amen, Everybody need a guardrail to keep them on the road. And I know I do. Look at what he says here. So, so he persuaded them through revelation about Jesus Christ. And whenever you bring truth and you bring revelation, it's going to cause people, listen now, who are not abiding in the same truth uh -huh. yep. to rebel against the truth. And that's the problem we have in the church. There was a time where the church was the place to be, especially now. Uh -huh. There was a time where if there was something going on in the world, we all rushed to the church for prayer. We, yeah. you know, started our prayer meetings and started yeah. our fasting. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. And had our a uh, 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 Friday night services. Y'all ain't yeah. saying nothing. Have our deliverance services. Y'all ain't yeah. saying nothing. Have our uh, uh, receiving the Holy Ghost. So y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. And, and, and we would walk around yeah. in the community and we would we we would know people in the community. But now yeah. it's not like that. Yeah. And so yeah. now you can't get mad because people don't want to come to church because the church ain't coming to them. Yeah. You better say it. But look at somebody say, I'm back. I'm back. He says here, he says here, he persuaded the people with a revelation. He began to uh, teach them about God. And, and the funny thing is that if you talk to them, I've done this a few times. I've been to people's houses working years and years and years ago. And they just cussing and fussing and cussing and fussing and acting crazy. And then I mention God and they straighten up and say, yeah, I go to church. <laughs> and I say in the back of my mind, Five minutes ago, you were trying to get me to... Okay, another story. But look at what he says here. He says, as he began to reach them, preach them the revelated knowledge of God, the people got angry. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he said that, that the people got so angry that they stoned him. Right. Now I'm going to get down to the meat of the message. I'm probably the only one in here that's ever been stoned before. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'm not talking about with the rocks and the pebbles Come on. And, and, Come on. and the bricks and, uh -huh. and the bad. Uh -huh. I'm talking about stoned with yeah. words. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Come on. That's I'm talking right. about being stoned with, with character assassination. I'm talking about, uh, talking about being being stoned and in, in, in being taken out of context yeah. of who you are, being stoned and being lied on, being stoned and being misunderstood, being being yeah. stoned and being misappropriated, if you will. And and what happens is, I'm not the only one that's been stoned. Life yeah. will stone you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 Something happened and, and, and you get hurt and you can't uh, uh, afford to do certain things. That's a stone. Yeah. 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 Somebody said they love you. You found out they was loving somebody else while they were supposed to be loving you. That's a stone. stone. Yeah. Somebody say, you know, I'm going to take care of you if you need me, but when you need them, you can't find them. Jesus. But then when the third roll around, you get your check, they on your doorstep. I can't get no help here. I'm just talking to myself. I'm just talking to myself. Uh, uh, those are stones of life. Amen. When you can't get the job that you're highly overly qualified for because your paid job is a little messed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you can't get the job because uh, uh, somebody younger than you, somebody with a different paid job, y'all ain't yeah. gonna talk to Come me, on. get the job simply because their paid job and not because of their ability. Uh huh. And then you get the temporary job and have to train the permanent person younger than you, with a different paid job, to do the job that you are qualified to do and teach yeah. them how to yeah. do yeah. what they can't even do. Yeah. But you have to deal. That's a stone. Yeah. That's right. Come when on. you're dealing with injustices and you're dealing with police brutality and you're dealing with uh, a men of color uh, being harassed simply because they're men yeah. of color, that's I a stone. Know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand that the God we serve, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not only can He block a stone, look at somebody say He can move a stone. Y'all yeah, don't have to take my word for it. The Bible says that early on Sunday morning, yeah. Mary Magdalene 
some sisters was going down there uh -huh. to prepare the body of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And then somebody said, well, who's going to move away the stone? Uh -huh. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus yeah. can move away uh -huh. the stone. Uh -huh. Somebody shout, I'm back. I'm back. He says, yeah. He says, he says, uh, and so they stone Paul. Now, here's the part that, that, that I, every time I read this text, I have a problem. I do. And, and I got to say, uh, I used to be a gang leader in the city of Baltimore, and, and, and I thought I was bad, still do. And, and, and I didn't take no mess, still don't. And, 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 and I would, you know, knock you into next week, and we're going to pray about that one. But look at what he says here. He says here, he says, and Paul, after they had drew him out to the city. I want y'all to get this. Don't miss this because most people have heard this and never caught this part right here. Okay. What is it that's driving you out of who or where you're supposed to be? We didn't heard this scripture a million times and never realized that they drew him out of the city. Catch this. They baited him. Mm -hmm. They tricked him. Mm -hmm. They entrapped him. Mm -hmm. They had an interior motive of what they wanted to do to him mm -hmm. because of his revelation of truth. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what is it or who is it mm -hmm. that is drawing you out right. of where you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Or what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. So he says here, they drew him out. They stoned him. Mm -hmm. And they say they drew him out, but if they stoned him, it seems like they dragged him out. I can't see them stoning him thinking he dead. And what they were saying was, you're going to die, but not in my city. <laughs> you're going to die, but not on my block. You, you're going to die, but not in front of our house. We're we going to beat you up. We're going to stone you. And then we're going to drag you outside of the city. As if to say, I have no idea what happened. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You have to be careful of people who do stuff to you and then yes. act like they didn't do it. Exactly. Jesus. Uh -huh. You have to be careful of spirits of people who, who try to embrace you as a friend only to find out what your weaknesses are and where your shortcomings are so they can expose you at their convenience to their uh, uprising. Y'all need to talk to me. You have to be careful of people who are quick to say, yes, I'm with you, Pastor. Yes, I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And on the download, they say, we're going to get him. Okay, y'all looking at me crazy. I've been in the street a long time and then I understand that everybody in your in your in your group ain't in your clique. That's right. Come on, Jesus. Am I right about that? That's right. Everybody hanging on the corner with you ain't ready to throw down when they go down. Y'all looking at me crazy. Everybody who said, Yeah, man, let's go over there and make it happen. Yeah. And we all start off walking, and when we get there, you started out with 20 people. When you get there, you got five. And just like somebody said, let's go up there and storm the Capitol. I'm going with you. But they went back to the White House. Okay, different story. Different story, different story, different story altogether. Different story altogether. But look at what he says here. So they drew him. So what is it that's drawing you away from what and who you're supposed to be? Let me just explore a few things because uh, it comes to my mind that certain things will draw you away from being what God is called to be. The first thing that draws you away is, is, is responsibility and accountability. Because whenever you decide in your mind that you're going to be where or be what God has called you to do, it comes with a price. It comes with responsibility and it comes with accountability. And oftentimes, we are good as long as I don't have to give an account. We're good as long as you can't hold it against me. We're good as long as you can't, you know, uh, come back after it didn't, after it failed and say, you said. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Okay. So look at what he says here. Look at somebody and say, I'm back. I'm back. So hold us here. Hold us here. Uh, they drew him out of the city. Watch this now. Supposing he had been dead. Here's the part where I want to get. I want to get. Uh, 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 just because I'm not moving. Uh, 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 you got to go here. Hey. Don't mean God ain't moving. You better say so. 
My Let me God. say it again. Just because My I'm God. not moving, My God. My God. don't mean God ain't doing something inside of me to oh, cause me to move God. again. Jesus. Just because it looks like it's over, just because it looks like it's done, just because it looks like it went kaput, just because it looks like there's no way out, doesn't mean that something is not still happening. Doesn't mean that God is not still moving. Doesn't mean that God doesn't have a blessing coming your way. But people will look at your circumstances and say, she's out. <laughs> people look and say, oh, he's done. People look and say, I knew it, I knew it, I knew he wasn't going to be nothing. I knew it, I knew it, I knew he was faking. I knew it, I knew it, I knew she wasn't what who she said she was. I stopped by to tell you, you need to let the sound noise and let the devil know I'm back. So they, they thought he was dead. And I know a lot of us are dealing with stuff in our lives that we thought were dead. Let me tell you. Yeah, come on. See, people think abstinence mm -hmm. means deliverance. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that's not true. Mm -mm. Okay. Just because you don't do it no more uh -huh. Uh -huh. doesn't mean you're necessarily delivered from doing it. Come on now. Come on now. Just because you don't sneak around don't mean if the opportunity wasn't presented to you, you wouldn't be enticed to be wrong. Just because you don't drink formally anymore, don't mean you don't drive by the liquors and say, boy, I want to go in there so bad. Come on. Come on now. Y'all looking at me crazy. Come on. Tell the truth. I'm talking about me now. Okay. And see, the thing for me is how I know I'm delivered from drinking because when I smell it, I get sick. Right. Amen. Amen. That's how you know we deliver from something uh -huh. that when you see you detaste it. It's, 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 it's no way I could do that. Mm -hmm. Amen. But a lot of us, the problem we have is that you supposing it's dead mm -hmm. because you're not in it and you're absent, you're practicing mm -hmm. absence in it. Let's say, for example, you know, for those of us who used to be like me, who used to be homemongers. Uh oh, I shouldn't have said that out loud. Oh, oh, my God. God. Did I say Help that? Somebody. Somebody. Help somebody. My wife and I was talking the other day and we was having a conversation and I started telling those to I said, girl, trust me, I want no virgin now. <laughs> and she laughed and said, I know, baby. <laughs> y'all looking at me crazy I ain't right. y'all. and I said that for a reason because see when that stuff gets inside of you at an early age yeah, that's right. Right. it don't just up and leave yes. that's right. you may stop doing it mm -hmm. but that don't mean that if the option don't present itself and ain't nobody looking mm -hmm. that you won't go in and snatch it uh, see you gotta understand how these words here you gotta understand just because you don't do it now doesn't mean that you're delivered it means that you just practicing not or you're sustain, abstaining from that act that you did. That's right. But what I want you to understand is it is a possibility to be delivered. Yes, it, is. <laughs> it is a possibility to allow God to remove that desire yes. and that thirst from you yes. and that anger from you and that yes. lust from you yes. and that foul mouth from you yes. and that foul yes. finger from you and that foul yes. spirit from you. It's a way to allow yes. God to do it. And the first thing is you have to acknowledge that even if the world has cast you as being yes. dead, yes. God still has a purpose, a plan, and a destiny for you yes. in Him. Yes. So you got to say, I might be dead in me, but now I'm going to kill it from me yeah. and I'm going to declare to the devil in the world I am back! Yes. 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 They, they drew him out of the city. What's drawing you out of the city? Notice here, he says they drew him out of the city and then after they drew him out of the city, they said they stoned him, and or they stoned him first, they drew him out of the city, probably they dragged him out of the city, and then they thought he was dead. Now that's funny thing, whenever people think you are dead, uh-huh. Yes. Let me describe dead. I don't mean the absence of life. I don't mean the the the, uh, the non-movement of the body in the state that the heart stops functioning. I don't mean where where no more oxygen gets to the brain and you die. I mean dead in the sense that they feel like you can't get up. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Here was the whole context of the scripture, the two scriptures, was that the people thought that they had beat him so bad mm -hmm. that it was no way he was gonna get back up. Yes, Is there anybody here other than me yeah. that have ever been through something so, so traumatic that you never thought you would get back up? Yes. Is there anybody that has lost so much in your life at one time that you couldn't imagine yourself getting back up? 
Yeah. Is it anybody here or anybody yeah. listening who can attest to the fact that there have yeah. been times in your life yeah. where yeah. if it had not been yeah. for a still voice yeah. saying to you, get up, oh. you would still be yeah. dead. God, thank yes. you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Is it anybody yes. here that if it had not been for a little voice that told you, yes. go over here, you went over somewhere where you weren't supposed to go normally, and you got a word from the Lord, yes. and the Lord revived you, yes. and the Lord restored you, yes. and the Lord gave you strength yes. back, and the Lord healed your body, but before then you was dead. I just stopped to tell you, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Here, he drew him out of the city, uh, supposing he had been dead. Now I gotta say this. Uh, 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 write this down. One of my points: everything dead looking is not actually dead. Say that with me. Everything dead looking is not actually dead. Say it one more time. Everything dead looking is not actually dead. One more time. Everything dead looking is not actually dead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad that when God should have gave up on me, come on. Look at somebody and say, He didn't. He didn't. Now, I got to be honest. There were times in my life where I would have gave up on me. <laughs> there were times where uh, the school teacher gave up on me. There were times where the principal gave up on me. There were times where the police was looking for me to put me away so they could give up on me. <laughs> oh, but I'm so glad that we serve a God. That when it looks like it's dead, it don't mean it's actually dead. When it looks like it's over, it doesn't mean it's actually over. When it looks like you had rock bottom, you found out that God can take you higher. When it looks like you can't make it, God will say, I'll bring you out. When it looks like this darkest day, God will say, I'll be your sunshine. When it looks like your body's all wrapped right with pain, God will heal you. Look at somebody and say, I'm back. I'm back. He says, he says, so they drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So remember, everything looking dead may not actually be dead. Yeah, that's right. Finally, in, in the 20th verse, and here's the part where every time I read this verse, I, I really have a problem. Watch this now. It says, how be it? Let me translate this. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish it. How be it as the disciples stood round about him? Now let me go back to my translation. What the heck? Because watch this. They was with him when he first went into the city. Uh -huh. They was with him when the crowd was cheering. Yes, yes, yes. But when they started throwing stones, come on now. They couldn't be found. Come on now. And when they was dragging his half dead looking tail out of the city, they was nowhere around. Amen. But after the crowd left, yes. they wanted to come around and inspect. Yeah. Yeah. Now, y'all ain't going to like this part. So we'll get a little graphic right here, but I hope y'all stay with me. Rats are that way. Yes. Oh, my. Amen. Yes. Amen. When one rat, when you corner a bunch of rats, they don't defend each other, they run. Amen. When you kill one of them, after you leave, all of them come around to smell and see if he's still alive. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I'm from Baltimore. I know what I'm talking about. And you gotta understand. You gotta understand how this is. That how can people who say they're with you, but when you go through your hell, when you go through your divorce, and you go through your, your struggle, and you go through your addiction, and you go through your, your denial, and you go through your jail time, and you go through your bad press, and you go through your bad the court situation, and you go through your loss of job, they they know we're around to be found. But after you get out, you know, after you did your bit of two, three, five, six, seven, ten years, then all of a sudden, here they come. Yeah, come on now. After you got divorced and you turned out and you got something, here they come. All right now. After you got in the hospital, they like, well, I was praying for the whole time, but guess what? But, but you didn't show up. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh -huh. We had a member in our church. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, our senior deacon, and thank God for him, he turned 80 years old today. Yeah. Deacon yeah. Ernest Williams, amen. Yeah. So glad to have him in the building on today. I was out of town. I was out of town. I was in, in Florida preaching the word of God to some of our uh, uh, members of ch churches of ours all across the country. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in Florida. I was in Florida. And, and his wife, Chris, called me uh, at night. First of all, when Chris called, something wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Chris called me. It was about uh, 
eight, nine o'clock at night. She said, she said, she said, she said, Pastor, she said, no, she, as soon as I heard her voice, I said, what's wrong, baby? Because mm -hmm. if Chris called, something wrong. Mm -hmm. Chris ain't a phone caller. Chris is a go-getter. Mm -hmm. but, but, but when she called me, I knew something was wrong. And I said, I said, what, I said, I said, what's wrong, baby? And she said, she said, she said, it's Kitty. It's Kitty. It's Kitty. I said, what's I said, what's wrong with him? She said, it's Kitty. It's Kitty. He 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 he, he had a stroke. He, he he couldn't talk. And, and and I called him. I said, I said, okay. I said, listen, I'm not in town, but I'm gonna start praying. I'm gonna get somebody over to see him. So I did what I was supposed to do. I, 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 all night long, all night long, I'm on the floor praying, all night long praying. And God, God, you got to strengthen him. God, you got to turn this thing around. We still got ministry to do. God, you got to turn this around. He still got things to do for you. God, you got to turn this thing. I'm praying all night long. I'm praying all night long. Got up in the morning, talked to some saints. All the saints went over there to see him. Praise the Lord. And and because the power of prayer. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. When they got to see him, he said, I'm back. I can talk now. Elders went over, the deaconess went over, the members went over, everybody went over. So when I got back, when I got back, he said, he said, he said I called him, I, I talked to him a couple of times, and when I got back, I called him, I said, I said, hey, D guy, you know, I said, where you at? He said, he said, um, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm coming out, you might as well not come on over. I said, what? Hallelujah. I said, what? He said, well, you know, a lot of people came, the deacon, he said, he said, he said, he said, your brother, your, your brother, the big one. <laughs> he said, your brother, the big one, him and his wife came over. I said, Elder Tiny, he said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, I said, but, but they ain't me. <laughs> I said, they ain't me. I said, I'm glad they came. I thank God they came and, and I, I'm, I'm excited they came. I said, but they ain't me. I said, ain't nowhere in the world. I'm going to let you be in the hospital and I be somewhere around and I don't even at least show up to stick my head in the door and say, hey. Amen. I'm getting somewhere. See, you have to be wary of people who can only come around when things are well. Yes. But when you get in trouble, you can't find them. So look at what he says here. So they dragged him out, uh, and how be it? That's why I said, what the heck? Because how can you be running with me? How can you be with me? How can you be my homeboy? How can you be my homegirl? How can you be uh, my, my, my spiritual person in the Lord, and you with me in the Bible? And, and then when stuff go wrong, you back up in the corner like, I don't know you. Come on, Pastor. As soon as you see rock start coming, mm, step back. I don't want to hit me. Y'all looking at me crazy. Come on now. So that's why I said, what the heck? You mean to tell me that his buddies, his disciples, his followers, the ones he was teaching, the ones he was training, the ones that knew the God in him, just stood there and watched? Here's the difference between me and Paul. When I got up, they done got beat up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. How are you gonna let me get a beat down? And then y'all got to pray for me. Y'all got y'all got to pray for me. I told y'all earlier. Just because you stopped doing something, don't mean that you delivered from it. Amen. Amen. I, I'd have been a little upset that you know uh, y'all stood there and watched me almost die, and none of y'all thought enough of me to either grab me and drag me out the city before they killed me, or at least stand over top of me and take some blows for me. Yeah, come on. And that's because oftentimes you can't make leaders leaders if they only follow us. Amen. 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 You cannot make leaders leaders if they only follow us. Okay. Leaders will take the brunt. Yeah. Leaders will stand up. Leaders will get involved. Yeah. Leaders will say, no, not on my watch. Uh -huh. Leaders will say, oh, it might be more to y'all than me, but y'all ain't going to do this. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Leaders. Yeah. Too many times Jesus said, well, listen, you Pharisees and Sadducees, y'all don't know the word. Let me show you what it is. Come here, bring that person here. Healed. <laughs> See, leaders will say they'll do what has to be done for the sake of God and for the sake of Jesus Christ because they know that when they do what they are called to do, that they have had the, the power to say, I'm back. Yes. Look at what he says here. So, 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 so he got up and he said his disciples stood around him just like everybody else. Thinking he was dead. They probably said, well, he was a good teacher. And uh, we thank God for him. And we, we, we know that he was anointed of God. And, and this is for him. Back in the day, we used to give one for the brothers that won't hear. This, this is for the brother who ain't here no more. Yep. The Bible says that Paul rose up. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Here's where the heart of the message Hallelujah. is. Hallelujah. In order for you to be back, uh-huh. you have to get over what happened to you. Uh-huh. Yes, Lord. Number one. Number two, you, you have to be able to handle the hand that was dealt to you. Uh-huh. You can't be upset about what happened to you. And then you got to remember that everything that looks dead mm-hmm. may not actually be dead. Yeah. And then you have to be willing to rise up. Mm-hmm. Say that with me. I must, I I must be, willing be willing to rise, to rise. To rise up. up. The Bible says that he rose up. Now, no doubt that when he rose up, he was a little discombobulated. I don't know if you've ever been uh, 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 in a surgery of some sort and 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 you have to use anesthesia and in using it, anesthesia puts your body at a place of rest. I don't know about you, but uh, the one time that I was in surgery, uh, uh, that was the best rest I ever had in my whole entire life. The surgery was six hours and it seemed like it was five minutes. Amen. That's some good sleep when you sleep so good that you have no conscience of time. <laughs> That's some good rest when you get up. You're like, yeah, yeah. But, but but the point I'm making is that when he first came to you, he was a little discombobulated because he had to have been, uh, his mind was playing on the last images that was in his mind, which was him being stoned and eventually being knocked unconscious. So his mind had to get this word. Everybody say, restart. 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 His mind had to restart to understand that what almost happened didn't happen. Uh-huh. Good God uh-huh. Almighty. Yeah, yeah, uh, they, yeah, they, yeah. He almost got me, but he didn't get yeah. me. It almost killed me, but it didn't kill me. It almost knocked me out, but it yeah. didn't knock me out. Uh-huh. And as long as there yeah. is a little bit of conduct in your mind yeah. to say that I still got a chance to yeah. make it. I, yeah. I, I, I still yeah. got hope. Yeah. In fact, the psalmist said this way. He said, my hope yeah. is built. Yeah. Good yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. On nothing yeah. less. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That Jesus Say nothing. Yeah. And righteousness. Yeah. Good God help me here. So you've got to be able to say, if I'm going to come back, I've got to get out of my uh, my discombobulated state yeah. and I got to rise up. Right. Yeah. Can I help you here? Yeah. You gotta rise up rise over up. what happened to you. You gotta yeah. rise up over how it happened. Right. You gotta yeah. rise up on, over man. who did it. You gotta yeah. rise up of what it caused you to be at the That's end. You gotta rise up of forget about how it hurt you and how it, it messed you up. But yeah. you gotta say to yourself, I'm going to rise up yeah. because I'm back. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I can imagine him that when he rose up, first he got yeah. out of his discombobulated state, and then he came to himself. Yeah. There's got to be a point in your life, yeah. if you're going to come back, you've yeah. got to come back to yourself. God help me here. Yeah. When, when, when I first got saved, I was, I was Jesus crazy. Yeah. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. When I first got saved, everything was Jesus. Amen. Yeah. When I first got saved, everything yeah. was like the Lord. Amen. Right. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. And some of us gotta get back to the stage where we trust God just like that. Right. I trust him for the air I breathe. I, I thank him for, for, for the, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I thank him for the rain that fell down and washed my car. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I thank him for how I got up and I could go to the bathroom. I thank him how that when I got up and went to the bathroom, I could go to the bathroom once I got in the bathroom. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I thank him that nobody have to sit me to get, go to the bathroom, to get in the bathroom, then use the bathroom when I got to the bathroom. And then I think that when I got up and I went to wash my hands, I had some water come on, to wash my hands with. Then I think that when I got back in my house, amen, got back in the bed, I didn't see no spots in the ceiling which indicated the rain had dropped on my head. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to come to yourself. It's here, it says here that he rose up, he rose up. So he came to himself. So make sure you write that point down that you got to make sure that after, after you have been through all of that, after you get on your discombobulated state, after you realize, watch this now, discombobulated means I realize now that this is not that. God help me here. What kind of victory line do we have if we could all get together and say, I understand now this ain't that. Church now ain't like it used to be, so this ain't that. People now are not like they used to be, so this ain't that. Jobs have
haven't changed from being uh, having to have a master's degree to get a good job to just being able to run a computer. Right. This ain't that. Yeah. Jobs have changed. I mean, now it's like you have to go in and do a nine to five, and now you got you can stay home four days out the week. Yeah. This ain't that. Yeah. But I stop by to tell you some things that were that is still that. Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews it says he's the same. Come on, yeah. yesterday. Come on, yeah. today. Come on, and forever. There's some things that did not change in God. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a way maker. He can still turn it around. He can still bring you back. He can still restore you. Look at somebody say, I'm back. He says, he says, he says, he says so, 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 so he rose up. Look at somebody say, you got to be willing to rise up. Write that down. You got to be willing to rise up. So after he rose up, he says, watch this now. Most people, most people, when they get from an atrocity, when they come from a dramatic situation, after they uh, get through their discombobulated sense and they grab their composure back, mm -hmm. they normally go in the other direction. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God, just Anybody other? That's true. Come on. Come on, tell the truth. Yeah. I got, I got a whole lot of times where, where I went in the other location. But remember the topic of this message. I'm I'm back. Back. <laughs> it's alright to go another direction if you're going to get some help. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna talk about myself, amen. I'll be like, okay, y'all six got me right now, but <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Look here, so you gotta understand, you gotta understand that in the context of the scripture, the of the scripture, it says that he rose up uh -huh, and he went back. Now, you have to ask yourself. Why in the world would, would Paul go back when they already rejected him, they already came against him, and they stoned him, then dragged him out of the city mm -hmm. and left him for dead? Now, I always wondered that, and here's what you got to get. Get these points. Number one, because you were rejected doesn't mean your assignment changed. All That's right. right. All right. All right. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Because they rejected you doesn't mean that God changed his mind. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, so that means that because they rejected you, doesn't mean your assignment changed. Number two is that as long as you still got some fight in you, yeah. then you gotta go back and fight. Yes. 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 Uh, we were talking. Uh, my wife and I watched the movie, and and and, and as all of you may not may or may not know, uh, uh, World War II and and how we overcome the Nazis and overcome uh, Germany, and, and and we we invaded the the. the the beach of, of, of Poland. Uh, uh, a lot of people think that Roosevelt was was the one that yeah. that came of all that. It was Winston Churchill, and Winston Churchill once voted to be uh, was trying to be the president, and they wouldn't make him the president because they said he was too he was too too fight too fierce for too too crazy. But 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 he never stopped being who he was because even though they kicked him out of the government, he went back to the government mm -hmm. to do what his assignment was. Uh -huh. And what a lot of us don't know is, I'm going to get let the secret out, what people don't know is, is that after they said he wasn't worthy to be the president, mm -hmm. they made him an ambassador. Yep. And what he did was, uh, Winston Churchill, he came up with a plan mm -hmm. that if we can deceive the Germans to think that we're going to strike in Sicily, mm -hmm. then we can beat them in Germany. And this is how they did the plan. Watch this. They took a dead man, put papers on him, and made a story up to say that he was a soldier carrying important papers. He, he looked dead, but he was dead with a live purpose. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, help me here. They took him up to, 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 to the Spanish border, and they, and they put his body out. When the, when the tide was right. Listen to this. Listen to this. They knew exactly when the end tide would come. Uh -huh. So if I put his body in the water, when the end tide will come, mm -hmm. the current will push him to the shore. Amen. Right. Yes. Right. See, we think that stuff happens just to be happening. The Bible says it this way. He says, and we know that all things work together for the good. Yeah. To them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. You think it just happened, but God had you in the right place on the yes. tide. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Could yes. push you in. Yes. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna talk yes. to me. Yes. See, a lot of y'all don't know that it didn't just happen, God had the tide. Yes. Yes. Push you in. Y'all yes. don't know this, but God had 
the tide and the timing yeah. push you in. Yeah. God had the time, the tide, and the talent yeah. to push you in. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk yeah. to me. God had the time, the talent, the tide, and the tolerance yeah. to push you in. Yeah. So in other words, you thought it was just happening. You didn't like how it was going down, but all in all, God had you in the right place at the right time with the right talent to be tolerated enough for the time to push you in. Look at somebody say, I'm back! And finally, what happened in Winston Churchill case, uh, the Germans bought it, and, and, and they went and put all their troops over in Sicily, and we attacked them in Normandy, and we took the hill, and then we stormed across Germany. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. See, 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 so you gotta understand, just because it looked like dead don't mean it ain't got a plan. Come on, Jesus. Look at what he says here. He says, he says, so, so, so he, he rose up, he rose up, and, 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 and he came to himself. There's got to be a point where in order to come back, you got to come to yourself. Now, when you come back to yourself, uh, the Bible says it this way, uh, that, that the prodigal son the Bible talks about, the prodigal son, you remember him, the prodigal son was a very wealthy young man. Yes. Mm -hmm. He lived in a house, his father was very wealthy, and he had all kinds of things and stuff, uh, 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 beautiful things and all kinds of luxury things that you could have in those days. Well, he decided one day that he was going to take his living and take his part and he was going to leave. Uh, long story short, you know the story, he lost everything. <laughs> and he found himself in a pig pit. But the Bible says he came to himself. When you come to yourself is when you look around and say, this is not where I'm supposed to be. Ah, oh, you better say Amen. so. When you come to yourself, you Jesus. say, I know the Lord didn't bring me this far. Come on. Come, come on. on. Come on. Jesus. I mean, I might not have one arm. I might be missing come one on, toe. Jesus. I might be missing, you know, one ear. Yes. I might be blind in one eye. On. But this ain't the prophecy that I got. Oh, Jesus. I know the Lord didn't let me go through all of this and all this loss and all this carnage and all this death and all this destruction and all this hell and all this hurt and all these operations and all this pain and all this being told what I would not be to leave me where he said. So at some point you gotta come to yourself and say look here self, self say who? We getting up out of here. <laughs> you gotta say self say who? You gotta say oh we got better than this. How can we say that greatest healing is in me the healing is the world and we sitting here and like the, like the, like the psalmist said or the scripture said oh, why sit you here lest we die? Yes, yes, yes. I'm not gonna die. I'm gonna come to myself and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go back to my start, my, my, my mission. I'm gonna go back to what I was called to do. I'm gonna go back to my plan. I'm gonna go back to what God has charged me to do. I'm going back to where I was to show them that the God I serve is not a God that quits because you're getting knocked down. Now the people say we fall down, but we get back up again. Look at somebody say, I didn't fell down, but I'm getting back up. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine the looks on the people's face when they saw him? Listen, limping back into town, bruises and knots on his head, and a smile on his face. Sometimes the mission is that you stay. Sometimes the mission is that you went back to declare the goodness of the Lord. Sometimes it may not feel good. Sometimes it may not look good. Sometimes it may not even sound good. But sometimes you got to go back because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Sometimes you got to go back because God has not forgotten or abandoned his mission for you. People look at situations that people say, girl, I don't even know why you stayed. And your answer is simply, because the Lord didn't tell me I could leave. Come on now. Everybody else said, leave that joker. I'm being nice because we're on TV. They said, leave that joker. Mm -hmm. He ain't no good. He done done mm -hmm. this. Leave him. Mm -hmm. And you say, yeah, I know. But the Lord didn't tell me I could leave. Amen. Amen. My example is my mother. My mother, my mother, it was it was six kids, and my mother and my father. And my father used to beat my mother. My, my father used to beat my mother where her eyes were swollen up and she could couldn't walk or couldn't see. And he did all he beat my mother bad. Uh -huh. And so one day, so one day, I was I was about nine years old, maybe, and I'm the baby, and, and, and me and my three brothers, we decided we wasn't gonna have it no more. Amen. My father had come home, he was drunk, and, and he beat my mother. He beat her real good. 
My oldest brother had a bat. I had a knife. My other brothers had some other stuff. And we bust the door down. We said, you better get your hands off our mother. And my mother jumped up with her eyes swole out. Stood in front of my father. And said, y'all can't kill him. He's your daddy. Jesus. And I hated my father most of my life. But because my mother stayed. Jesus. She got six kids that are ordained ministers. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. My God. Because my, my God. mother stayed. Uh -huh. She got four out of the six kids that have doctor's degree. Amen. Jesus. Because my mother stayed. My God. She got three out of the six that are pastoring today. All right. Jesus. Because my mother stayed. Yes. See, yes, so a lot yes. of times, you know, you have to stay if the Lord tells you to stay. Yes, yes. That's right. Oh, yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But because you did and you do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. the Lord blessed you yes. in your union. Yes. Yes. Maybe yes. not with the man, yes. but the offsprings came out yes. Yes. all right. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, look on their face when... When, when, when he came into town limping and, and all bruised mm. up, and he's still preaching the same word mm -hmm. My God. Yes. that they stoned him for. Come on. Yes, yes, Lord. Mm. And the Bible says that, 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 that he did it in such a way mm. that people started getting converted. They was able to receive because they saw something, yes. watch this, they had never seen before. They saw a man be dead and come back yes. and say, I'm back. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. I Yes, now, in closing, when I take the word, when I take the word back and I begin to analyze it, uh, the B in my mind would stand for believe. Because if you're gonna come back, you've got to believe that's right, that's right. that you're gonna be successful. If you're gonna come back, you've got to believe that the Lord is still with you. If you're going to come back, you've got to believe that no weapon formed against me yeah, shall prosper. Yeah, yeah. And every tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment, thou shall condemn. Yeah. This is the heritage uh -huh. of the saints of the Lord, yes. and the righteousness yes. of me, yes. saith the Lord. Yes. Uh -huh. and, then, and then, as I understand, if you don't believe it, ain't no sense in you doing it. Amen. Well, but if you believe it, then there's a power inside of you. Yeah. It's called that uh, uh, anageia, which is our English word of energy. Yeah. <laughs> and when you believe that God will do exactly what he said he would do. The psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord, come on, who was on my side, come on, where would I be? In other words, that Anakaya energy inside of you gave you some get up and go, gave you some get up and do it, gave you some get up and fight, gave you some get up and preach, gave you some get up and sing, gave you some get up and stand. Look at somebody say, I'm back. I'm back. If you're going to come back, you got to understand that the A stands for anointed. <laughs> you got to understand that although you've been through hell and although you've been through stuff and although you're dealing with tragedy and although you're dealing with stuff broken in your life, you got to remember that you are still anointed by God. And because you're anointed, his anointing doesn't abandon you. His anointing doesn't leave you. His anointing doesn't walk away. His anointing hovers over top of you until you yield and say, yes, Lord. So if you're going to come back, you got to believe and then you got to stand under your anointing and stand with your conviction of your anointing and say, I'm going to trust God. You got to say to yourself, I'm back with his anointing in my life. Yeah, I know I've been to jail. Yeah, I know I was on drugs. Yeah, I know I was an alcoholic. Yeah, I know I was a luster. Yeah, I know I was a fornicator. Yeah, I know I was whatever I was doing, but I'm back now and I'm standing under the anointing of God. And then you got to say to yourself that C stands for conqueror. You got to say to yourself the Bible says, I am, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And if you can't see yourself winning, you in the wrong fight. If you can't see yourself overcoming, you in the wrong fight. If your God is dead, try mine. He's still alive. Look at somebody say, I'm back. I'm back. First of all, you got to believe. Then you got to remember you're anointed. Then you got to remember you're a conqueror. And finally, you got to have this one right here. I know. That's the one I want to walk on. I want to walk on. I know. The scripture says it this way. And we know. <laughs> the scripture says, and we no. Uh -huh. That all things are working together for the good. And I want to leave you with this. 
when you make your comeback, you got to know that it wasn't a setback. It was just a reset to get back to where God said, I got your back. Oh, God, help me. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm back because I know that it's working together for my good. I know he's working on me. I know he's turning it around. I know he's opening a door I can't see. I know he's shutting a door that's behind me. I know he's strengthening me. I know he got my back. I know he's inside of me. I know I'm anointed. I know I'm a conqueror. I know I believe. Look at somebody and say, I'm back. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody take a minute. Let's just give God some praise in here. Come on, somebody take a minute. While you're home, lift them hands and give God some praise. And say, God, I thank you for letting me come back. I thank you, God, for keeping me. I thank you, God, for sheltering me. I thank you, God, for protecting me. I thank you, God, for keeping my mind when I should have been gone. Thank you. Yeah, God. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. 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 And the next day, uh-huh. y'all didn't catch it. And the next day, in other words, after you've come back, now move on to what's next. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, I, I was sick, but guess what? I'm back. I was in Florida deep, but. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back now. Yeah. And now that I'm back, I'm going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I'm back, you're going to see me. Yes. Now that I'm back, you're going to see the God yes. in me. Yes. <laughs> now that I'm back, you're going to see that what I believe yes. is back. Yes. Now you're going to see that my anointing which never left, but is now coming back to surface. Yes. Now you're going to see the conqueror in me. Yes. Uh-huh. And now you're going to see that I know. Yes. The psalmist said, why should I be discouraged? Yes. Yes. That's what he said. Yes. The punchline is he says, he says uh, uh, if, if he has his eye, if God has his eye on the sparrow, mm-hmm. then he says, I know. (laughs) In other words, there ought to be a sense of confidence in your coming back. That I know. This time, with God, I'm going to make it. This time, with God, we're going to turn it around. This time, with God, we're going to do what he called me to do, and then we're going to move to what's next. Hallelujah. Yes. So, recap. It's good in order to come back. You got to go back and overcome what put you back. You can't be upset about what happened to you. You got to be able to handle what happened. Everything dead looking is not actually dead. I must be willing to rise up. And then, after I rise up, I have to be able to shake off the past and go back to my assignment. And after I complete my assignment, I have to go to what's next. Look at somebody and say, I'm back. I'm I'm back. 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 Amen. We thank God for the word. Can we give the Lord a hand praise in this house? I want you to understand. I want you to understand that 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 it is imperative that you not give up the fight. Yeah, my God. Thank you. It's imperative that you not give up the fight. I want to speak to some people because um, most of you don't know it, and I've said it several times, but I'm gonna say it again out loud. I suffer from PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. If you look at me, I look like I'm okay. But I struggle with stuff. Amen. And a lot of times people will look at us, all of us, because we we carry it well yes. and don't know what we did with it yes. on the inside. Yes. Amen. Amen. Naomi Judd, a renowned 
actress, mm -hmm. singer, performer. Mm -hmm. Was yeah. talking to her daughter. Her daughter left the room. She pulled out a gun, shot herself, mm -hmm. and killed herself. Mm -hmm. She was dealing with traumatic mm -hmm. depression. Mm -hmm. If you looked at her, and you seen her on the stage, mm -hmm. you would think she was perfect. Mm -hmm. And I was telling somebody, somebody who knew that I had PTSD, and they said, well, you can't have it because we see you preaching. Let me help you. I've been preaching for 40 years. I've been preaching since I was 18 years old. I can do this in my sleep. With or without traumatic, post-traumatic stress. Because this is the only place that I'm comfortable. This in my house. Everywhere else, I'm like, I'm still doing it now too, but I'm more comfortable here. Amen. Amen. So I want to speak to people who have internal issues mm -hmm. Jesus. that nobody knows but you. My God. You can come back. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. We can come back. Yes. 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 You got to find that place yes. uh -huh. where you're normal and you're strengthened. Yes. Yes. And you got to stay in that God place to strengthen you. yourself. Yes. Oh, my That's God. where you need to go. Yes. Yes. For me, it's church. Yes. For me, it's church. Yes, God. Amen. I preached in Germany. I preached in Iraq. I preached in Kuwait. I preached in North Carolina, Georgia, Texas. Everywhere I've been, I preached here in Baltimore. Because that's the one thing that I can do. See, my anointing never left me. Uh -huh. PTSD came and joined me. Uh -huh. But my anointing never left me. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm no different than everybody else. Uh -huh. I have struggles just like you do. Uh -huh. yeah. But I made up in my mind, I'm going to be back. Right. I'm not going to let whatever is trying uh -huh. to destroy me uh -huh. overtake me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, because yeah. I believe uh -huh. I'm yeah. anointed. Yeah. Yes. I'm a conqueror. Yes. 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 And I know. Yes, Lord. So if this message has been spoken to you and been and been encouraging to you, I want you to understand that you can make a statement to the devil in the world and tell him, I'm back. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, in stating that you're back, it doesn't mean that poof, just like that, no, you no. get everything back no. in the physical sense. Yeah. Yeah. It may even take a while for you to come back. But you know what? Success. Yeah. Is not just physical and material. Mm -hmm. That's right. Success mm -hmm. is mental yes. and spiritual. Yes. That's right. So if you can mentally and spiritually see your mm -hmm. vision and mm -hmm. see your victory, mm -hmm. you already won. Yes. Because mm -hmm. yes. when you get to this point, mm -hmm. cars don't matter, mm -hmm. houses don't matter, mm -hmm. people don't matter, right. little stuff like. I can breathe on my own. Amen. Amen. Little stuff like, <clears throat> I can walk. That's right. Mm -hmm. Little stuff like, I can scratch my itch. That's right. Mm -hmm. Little stuff like, I got that fine looking woman to sit over there next to. <laughs> Y'all looking at me crazy. Mm -hmm. Little stuff. Mm -hmm. So victory is not only material and physical. Victory yes. is mental yes. and spiritual. If you can see it in your spirit, mm -hmm. you can feel it in your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can walk around with two nickels in your pocket yeah. and feel like you're a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to encourage you, those of you that are watching, those of you that are in the sanctuary on today, uh, that you got to remember, you got to make a statement and say you're back. Mm -hmm. But you got to get back in your mind yes. mm -hmm. and in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus Yes. can give you yes. the back spirit mm -hmm. in your spirit mm -hmm. and in your heart. Yes. 
And if you've heard this word today and it's spoken to where you are and it's spoken to where you're feeling and it's spoken to the atrocities that have overcome you during your lifetime or it spoke to the traumatic situations that have overcome you or it spoke to some of the things that you're dealing with even right now today by simply accepting Jesus Christ back in your life, in your spirit, in your heart, you'll be able to declare, I'm back. And I promise you, when you make this declaration, everything else will follow. I want you to hear me clearly. When you make this declaration that I'm back in Jesus Christ, everything else Yes, sir. Follows. Yes, yes, yes. Everything else follows. Yes. So I'm wondering if there's somebody here that says, you know what? I need to get back to God. I need to get back to my godly ways. I need to get back to receiving and trusting him to do in me what he has anointed me to do. I'm back. And it's simple. I want you to do this. Unless you're driving, unless you're driving, I want you to raise your hands where you are and say, Lord, Lord, Lord come into my life. Come into my life. life. Restore me. Restore me. Strengthen my belief in you. Strengthen my belief in you. Reawaken my anointing in you. Reawaken my anointing in you. Restart my conquering spirit. Restart my conquering spirit. And restore my knowledge of you. And restore my knowledge of you. Come into my life. Come into my life. And I may make you Lord and Savior. I may make you Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I'm if you're here, this mission has been a blessing to you, man, and you want to partner with New Harvest, and you want to help us to do the things we do, which is simply to help the community and help people in need and to help build this word and have this word prepared to go all across the country. It's simple to do. There's three ways you do it. This is how we do it. In our church, you can go to Givelify, New Harvest Givelify. You can uh, go to Givelify, and you can donate and partner with us to help us to strengthen the ministry and do what we have to do. Amen. Uh, the second way you can do it is you can go to our cash app, which is dollar sign New Harvest Word. Amen. And you can donate and contribute there. This is good ground, and you can sow here and help us to build the ministry and do what we need to do to help the community that we serve. The second thing you can do is you can uh, do it the old-fashioned way, like Sister Marsha. How you doing, Sister Marsha, out there? I see you out there, girl. Uh, uh, you can do it the old-fashioned way. You can put it in the mail. Amen. The P office. Amen. You can send it to 2 North Carey Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. Amen. That's 2 North Carey Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. Amen. And we pray that this message was a blessing to you. And also, you can also go on YouTube. We're trying to accumulate enough signatures, enough likes on YouTube. Amen. So that we can be able to reach more places. There are places where YouTube go where Facebook doesn't. Amen. And so uh, you can go to subscribe, go to the uh, YouTube and subscribe to New Harvest Word Empowerment Global Ministries. And I want you to go up there, subscribe to us and say, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Say you like us. Amen. And subscribe to us so that we can reach out to the world in places where the, the proper or the, the communication that we use cannot reach. And it's imperative because we want everybody to be able to say, I'm back. So we love you, and we trust God for you, and we say to you that remember that although it looks like it's dead, doesn't mean it's actually dead, and God will cause you to rise up so that you can face the devil in the eye and mm. say, I am back. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a praise. We'll see you next week. <laughs>